Hello and welcome to this video podcast flip lesson for section 5.3, Solving Quadratic Equations by Finding Square Roots. Our goals for the lesson will be to solve quadratic equations and to use quadratic equations to solve real life problems. This first video will be looking at properties of square roots so that we can use them efficiently when solving quadratic equations. However, before we get into that, I'd like to tell a little story. A little story that will put us in the mood for solving quadratics using square roots. This is a story about a prison that had a mean prison guard. <laughs> that had a whole bunch of people in his cell. In this cell we have a group of circle people and a group of block people. The circle people and the block people got along well in prison, but as can be guessed, they really wanted to get out of there. They were really excited one day when the prison guard came and said, Attention! We will be releasing any three-headed monsters. And so that everybody realized he was talking about three-headed monsters and not two-headed or four-headed or five-headed, he hung the number three outside of the jail cell. Well, seeing as there weren't currently any three-headed monsters in the prison, the circle people and the block people got to thinking, hmm, I wonder if we dressed up like a three-headed monster, if we could sneak out. And so they did that. It started with the circle people. Hey, let's go and dress up like a three-headed monster. And so three of them dressed up together as a three-headed monster and snuck out of the jail cell. The prison guard said, hey, be on your way, three-headed monster. And they were super excited. Seeing that that worked so well, three more circle-headed people went ahead and got dressed up together. And they snuck out together. Woohoo! All right, not to be outdone by the circle-headed people, the blockheads were like, Hey man, let's get all dressed up together and try that too. So three of them dressed up together and snuck out. Ha 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 ha! And they got out and the guard was like, Whoa, you got blockheads, but you're a three-headed monster. So whatevs, that's cool. Left all by themselves were two circle people and one blockheaded guy. And they're like, well... I suppose we could work together and try and sneak out. So they got all dressed together, those two circle heads and the block-headed guy, and they tried sneaking out. And the prison guard said, Whoa! I see what you're trying to pull on me. You can't just dress up together and sneak out. You obviously don't belong. I can tell by your different heads that you're not a three-headed monster. Shame on you! So they went back into the cell and they got undressed to be left alone by their friends. Outside we had two of the circle-headed three-headed monsters and one of the block-headed three-headed monsters that had snuck out, but these guys were still left in jail. You're probably thinking, what in the world does this have to do with square roots, let alone quadratics? Has this guy done slid off his cracker? Well, no, I haven't. Some people might think I have. But, uh-uh. This actually does relate. And let's take a look. Here we were looking at three-headed monsters. Let's look at two-headed monsters, thus being square roots. Huh? Yeah. Here I've got the square root of 500. That's really like having the number 2 written out in front. We don't usually write it, we just assume it's there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and prime factor out this 500. So 500, that factors into 5 times 100, which is the square root of 5 times 10 times 10, which if I go a little bit further, that gives me 5 times 2 times 5 times 2 times 5. All right, cool. Now, being that we are looking for a two-headed monster, two of the same kind can dress up and sneak out together. So two of these fives are going to dress up and sneak out together, and 
two of the twos are going to dress up and sneak out together. So these two fives, they come out of the jail together, dressed up as a single five. And these two twos sneak out together as a single two, leaving alone that single five who can't dress up with anyone, so he's left in jail. The square root of 500 is then 5 times 2, which is 10. Square roots of 5. Finished! There it is. Wow! It all boils down to circle dudes and blockheads breaking out of prison. Cool. There are some more things we can do with properties of square roots. One of them I already kind of root used, which is the product property. But it, it really deserves us looking at this a little bit more closely and that being that the square root of a times b can really be written as the square root of a times the square root of b you don't believe me let's look if i were to say have oh, i don't know the square root of 81 which we all know is really 9 i could instead of think of that as the square root of 9 times the square root of 9, square root of 81, break that up into 9 times 9. That's square root of 9 times the square root of 9, which is 3 times 3, which is 9. We got the same answer, 9 and 9. That works. Check it. It works. We could do a similar thing with a quotient property. I could break the square root of A over B into the square root of A over the square root of b. Same type of proof works if you want to look at it. I'll save you the time right now though. It does work. So let's try applying these. All right, They work both ways. You're going to see me go both ways with this. Equality works in both directions. So let's try it. Here I'm going to use the product property backwards. The square root of 12 and the square root of 6. I'm going to rewrite that three stays out there as the square root of 72 then I'm going to prime factor the square root of 72 so that gives me 9 times 8 which goes a little bit further into 3 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 2 yep that's how it works now I'm doing square roots so I'm looking for two-headed monsters groups of two sneaking out together so these two three values are going to sneak out together. These two twos are going to sneak out together, leaving that single two under the radical. So we have that original three. Now we've got another three from those that pair dressing up together and another two from that pair dressing up together with a single value of two left under the radical. Three times three times two, that is 18. Square roots of two, that is done. That's how it works, folks. Not going to leave you there. I'm going to give you more bang for your buck here. Let's do a quotient. I'm going to break this up into the square root of 25 over the square root of 3. Square root of 25 is 5. That's easy enough, but I don't know what the square root of 3 is. Truth be told, it's an irrational number. It's a number that never ends, never repeats. It goes on and on forever. Kind of like you're thinking this video is doing right now. But I guarantee you we're getting close to the end. Mathematicians all over the world and math educators say, don't divide by an irrational number. I don't know how to break something up into the square root of three pieces. Oh, that's a problem. I personally okay with you leaving it like this, but just so that you're on board with everyone else, let's take care of it. To get rid of that square root of 3, that radical, that irrational number being in the denominator, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 3. What does that do for me, you're asking? Let me show you. Up top, I'm going to leave that as 5 times the square root of 3, but down below, using the product property, that gives me the square root of 9, which really is just 3. I can break something up into three pieces. I can divide it by three. That's okay. It's not irrational. We're good to go. Fine. Finished. So whenever we have a radical left in the bottom, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by that denominator value to get rid of the radical. Multiplying by the square root of three over the square root of three gets rid of the radical in the denominator, just leaving me with three. Now, 
to answer your question before you ask it, yes, it's cool if you jump from this step to this. For right now, for argument's sake, so that you see what's happening, I'm leaving that in there, but I'm cool with you leaving that out. That's all right. One more. Let's do it again, my friend. Let's bust this sucker up into the square root of 2 over the square root of 11. Now, I can't divide by an irrational number that square root of 11, so I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 11. Product property up top leaves me with the square root of 22. Down below, as you probably guessed, that's going to be the square root of 121, which is 11. We can just drop the radical, essentially. And we're done. That's it. Finished. Fine. You can go back and write down video, write down notes for this. Rewind and listen to me explaining this in excellent detail over and over, whatever you need. Or you can show up to class, and I'll explain it there. Or even outside of class, if you're just looking for that super cool math teacher to hang out with before or after school. There it is. Enjoy. I had a good time. I hope you did too.